Lee McIntyre is a philosopher of science who has been studying science denial. He's particularly interested in recent years in science denial of the flat earth variety. And there has been a, a burgeoning interest in flat earth with conferences on it and so on. And this particular form of science denial that the earth is flat is not nearly as dangerous as the science denial of vaccinations or climate change, but it is not harmless because it posits that all scientists are liars about the truth and that they are in conspiracy with all governments to keep people in the dark about the truth, namely that the earth is supposedly flat. Uh, last year in the American Journal of Physics, Lee McIntyre asked for help from physicists in rebutting the ideas of the flat earth community. I got interested in this. And when I looked at the kinds of rebuttals that scientists have given to the flat earthers, I was concerned that many of them were not actually very good arguments because they often depended on rather arcane knowledge that could include things that that's either people know only by rote, but certainly not by personal experience. Um, and for example, one of these rebuttals started out, since we know that the sun is nearly 100 million miles away, therefore, well, except for rote learning that it's 93 million miles away, what real evidence do you have from just naked eye observations how far away it is? So I wrote a a 3D computational representation of the US flat earth model, which consists of a disc with a dome over it. And I'll show you that in a bit. And as I wandered around in this, this model, I saw that there are many ordinary naked eye observations that are in wild disagreement with the predictions of the flat earther's own model. Now the flat earth is privileged naked eye observations. I see what I believe is what I can see myself. And that's, that's sort of positive. It's the beginning of science. Look and see what you see, and then try to understand what you see. But there are some negatives in, in their approach because uh, on the one hand, they've, they've made a model of flat earth with a, with a, with a, a disc and a dome rotating over it, which makes predictions that are just not in agreement with what you actually see. So they haven't made the next step. Also, they don't realize that much of what we now know through science has come through the invention of more and better and, and more sophisticated instruments, such as microscopes and telescopes that naked eye observations only take you so far and no farther. So with that background, I'm, I want to show you the model, show you the kinds of things we see in it, and talk about some of the ways in which there's a huge conflict between the prediction of the model and what one actually sees, even with ordinary naked eye observations. So what it looks like is this. It's a disk uh, whose center is at the, uh, the North Pole and whose edge is a high ice cliff where you and I think of it being Antarctica, but they think it's an impassable barrier and no one has ever gone to the South Pole because there isn't one. And moving into it, you see that and here we are at the equator. If you look around here, there's the North Star sitting above the North Pole of the Earth. And those trails are what you would see with a time-lapse photography as, as the stars go around, seem to go around the North Pole. Now, th they even show in their most prominent website, the Flat Earthers show, one of these time-lapse photographs of the night sky, where you do indeed see 
stars going around in circles around the North Star. But notice that in their model of a rotating dome above a motionless, non-rotating flat disk, those orbits are not circles, they are ellipses. And so here is one of the first obvious things that naked eye, albeit using a time-lapse camera, typically, um, you see a very, very strange thing that these are elliptical orbits, not circles, ellipses in their model. Moreover, notice that in their model, if you go south of the equator, you can still see the North Star, but in, in the real world, you cannot see the, the pole star from the Southern Hemisphere. So there are a lot of things that are wrong. Um, another thing is, if, uh, let me run this again. My mouse is following the sun. Their sun is three or 4,000 miles above the disk. And it's a essentially kind of a flood lamp. And so you, it's, we're, it's over in the other hemisphere now. And so it's dark right there. It just turned on in, in our hemisphere. And that's sunrise. Notice that it's way above the horizon. Um, and as my friend Derek Roth points out, you could never have sunlit bottoms of low-lying clouds in this, in this view because the sun is way, way above those clouds. Notice the size of it as we keep running and moving it closer. The sun is coming closer to us. And that means that it's going to get bigger. It gets bigger. It's getting bigger as it comes near us. And as it gets overhead at noon, it's actually over twice as big in, in diameter as it was at sunrise. Now, no one has ever seen a bigger than factor two change in the size of the sun from where you're standing. This, the key point is in this model, everything is relatively nearby. It's only a few thousand miles away at most. And that means that as things move, such as the sun or you moving across the, the flat disk, um, you're going to see things change a lot. But if, you, if the things are very far away, like the sun or the stars, as yes, you get a little bit closer, a little bit farther away as the earth rotates, but that's a negligible change in the distance considering the 100 million miles or the many light years. So there is something here that just plain doesn't work at all. Uh, also, if you look at these constellations coming around here, they of course get bigger as they get closer to you. Um, again, no one has ever seen in the night sky, constellations get bigger as they get closer to you. Nor has anyone ever seen, except on the North Pole, a constellation running along parallel to the horizon. So these are really, 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 really quite big issues. Also, if you look up at the North Star, in Dallas, it's about 33 degrees above the horizon because we're at 33 degrees north latitude in Dallas, Texas. But in this model, we're about 60 degrees. <laughs> you, if you go to uh, the place on this disk at, at Dallas latitude, the, the North Star is about 60 degrees above. So here are all these different ways in which the model predicts naked eye observations that are completely at variance with what actually happens. Now, for more information, take a look at these two places. At brucesherwood.net, my blog article, A Flat Earth, talks about this in more depth, gives some of the history and context for this. And tinyurl.com flat earth model is the computer model we were just looking at, which you can run just by going to that link. You don't need to install any software. Um, in the blog article, there's detailed instructions on how to use that model. Thank you very much.